All right, guys, 4.6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. Um, okay, let's jump right into this. Don't want to say too much about it yet, uh, but you've seen this before, and this is this should be pretty much a review for you, uh, but we'll take it a little bit deeper here. Let's check it out. First of all, I want you to know that the quadratic formula works all the time because, as you saw in your last lesson on completing the square, um, there's if you complete the square, that's a universal method of solving any quadratic, right? Finding the factors of any quadratic. Um, eventually, you would use the square root property when you're, when you're completing the square. Um, and sometimes, you know, those answers were getting kind of ugly with fractions and decimals and all that kind of stuff. So, um, what they've done is they've taken the same steps that you take when you're using the square root property and using completing the square and they've derived all of those steps down into one nice equation um, and that is the quadratic formula so um, if you can derive this formula for me which is not on page 294 by the way it's on page 264 so if you want to look at that this should be um, 264. If you can derive it for me and show me the steps uh, from doing that from page 264, uh, just remind me on your test that you want to prove that. I'll give you some extra credit um, if you can show those steps and show how they came up with this formula from completing the square. Um, okay, so but some of you probably don't care about how they came up with it. You just want to use it and get it done with. Uh, that's okay. That's what we'll do today here on this video. So for example, when it says solve this equation using the quadratic formula. Uh, so this is an example with two roots. Okay, so let's try that out. Uh, by the way, all of these will have two solutions. All right, one might happen uh, in two locations like these are saying. Uh, another example might be where both roots happen in one place. That's where we have the vertex that happens on the x-axis. And then there's also times where uh, there's no real solution but there's uh, there's two imaginary roots. So anyway, um, okay so for 1a what I first want to do is I want to put this into standard form. So I'm going to move the 16 over. So we have x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals 0. Now I have my a which is 1, so a equals 1, b equals 6, and c is equal to negative 16. Now that I know my ABCs, I can plug that into the quadratic formula. Okay, so we start with negative b, that's negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 6 squared minus 4, times a times c, all over 2a. Okay, so I plugged each of those things in, and now it's just a matter of solving this. So this is going to be negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36, uh, and this will end up being a plus here because we're subtracting a negative number, and 16 times 4 is 64, I believe. Um, so we can say plus 64 all over 2. And that is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 100 over 2. All right, the square root of 100 is just 10. So this is a nice one. We get negative 6 plus or minus 10 over 2. Um, you can either do that out right now, uh, or at this point, you could also simplify. So I know that 2 goes into everything, right? So 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we have negative 3 plus or minus 5 uh, over 1. Okay, so negative 3 plus 5 is 2, negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. So those would be your two solutions for 1a. Uh, but again, yeah, you could have just factored that, right? So an easier way to do that would have been to say, what two things multiply to give me this, add to give me this, which are these guys, right? Uh, and gone straight to factoring, but we're just practicing with nice numbers first using the quadratic uh, formula. Um, you'll see that most of the times when we're we're using this, when you choose to use this, by the way, this is a universal method, so you can choose to use this anytime if you like this method. Um, but 
typically we we pull this method out when things just get kind of ugly. All right, here we have nice answers, but things will get uglier. Um, okay, so here, let's do one B together. We have A is equal to 2, B is equal to 25, C is equal to 33. So again, we're just going to plug that in, right? So um, we have negative 25 plus or minus the square root of 25 squared minus 4 times 2 times 33 all over 2 times 2, 2a. Okay, so these numbers get kind of big. Okay, so if we go to square 25, 25 squared is 625. Okay, 33 times 8 essentially is 264. So we're going to subtract 264 from that, and that's going to be divided by 4. So just doing a little bit of simplifying here. 625 minus 264 gives me 361. So it's negative 25 plus or minus the square root of 361 over 4. Okay, and I don't know what goes into 361 nicely. Um, so I might end up just taking the square root of 361. Um, but on your test, if nothing goes in there nicely and it's not a nice perfect root, um, I would I would probably let you stop here, um, but we should take a look. Let's just try to take the square root of 361. Maybe there is something nice that goes into it. So let me do that really quick here on my calculator, which you can't see. Uh, let's take the square root of 361. Oh, it is nice. It's 19. All right, cool. So this is negative 25 plus or minus 19 over 4. All right, so negative 25 plus 19. Um, negative 25 plus 19 is going to be negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 4 is going to be uh, negative 3 over 2. And then negative 25 minus 19 is going to give me Uh, negative 44. Negative 44 divided by 4 is going to give me uh, negative 11. All right, so that's 1b. Uh, example 2, solve with the quadratic, quadratic equation with one root. This is going to happen when we, um, and see if you can tell what, what the, uh, when this is going to happen, like what the pattern is here. But this is when we have a solution like this where the the parabola comes down and touches the x-axis in one place they say it's one root it's really a double root right so it's a double root uh, we get into more of that in pre-calculus but anyway let's try this hopefully though you, you'll recognize this right off the bat um, where we have perfect square perfect square uh, and then two times the roots of those two things right so this is called the perfect square trinomial um, so this is when this happens, when you get the same thing on both, and this is equal to zero, right? When you get the same thing, same factor twice, it'll always happen with a perfect, so we talked about this last time a lot, perfect square trinomial. Um, but let's look at what that looks like within the quadratic formula if you don't see that off the bat. Okay, so a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 16, c is equal to 64. Uh, let's go ahead and plug those things in. So negative negative 16 is positive 16 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 squared minus 4 times 1 times 64 all over 2 times 1. That's equal to 16 plus or minus. Okay, so let's just simplify what's in there. 16 squared is 256. So I get the square root of 256. Uh, make sure you use parentheses if you're using your calculator for those because otherwise that'll come out negative. Uh, okay, and then 64 times 4 gives me 256. All over 2. So notice this goes to nothing. And I just am left with 16 plus or minus 0, so it's just 16 over 2, which is equal to 8. There's only one possibility there. Okay, so one answer, it happens at 8, so really this thing is going to come down uh, here at 8, over here at 8, and it's going to be kind of steep, 
it's gonna, it's gonna have a vertex right there at eight. That's what the picture kind of looks like. Obviously, that's a really ugly parabola, uh, but that's sort of what is going on. Then for 2b, uh, same kind of deal here. So you, again, what happened here, and by the way, what happens in here, the inside the, the square root sign, that thing is known as the discriminant. So we're gonna do some rules with that here in a second. So when the discriminant goes to zero, we know that we have one root, okay? And that's what's gonna happen here as well. So I'm gonna, actually, I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. I'll let you do this one. Um, but when you do this, you should be getting negative 17. All right, so try that one out. Example three, irrational numbers now. So here we go. This is when um, most people like to use the quadratic formulas when like the factoring methods just are not working out. So they switch over to the quadratic formula because uh, they get answers that look like this. So A here is three, B here is five, C here is one. Okay, so negative b, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, 25, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times 3, which is negative 5, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus, uh, this would be 12, which gives me 13, over 6. Okay, nothing there can be simplified, so I actually would encourage you to just leave your answer just like that and you're done. Okay, so don't worry on the test. I won't make you like do that out and do the decimals like last time. You can just keep it in radical form. Same deal here. We have a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 8, c is equal to 9. Go ahead and just try to solve that one out. You would get negative negative 8 is 8 plus or minus the square root of uh, negative 8 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 1. That's going to be 8 plus or minus uh, the square root of, let's see, that's going to be 64 minus uh, 36. So 64 minus 36 is equal to 28, all over 2. Um, if you leave it like this on the test, I'm going to I'm probably going to give you most credit, but I want you to try to simplify this. This is not simplified yes, yet. Um, so what perfect square is in 28? Hopefully you see 4 is in there, right? So 4 goes into that. So I can rewrite that as square root of 4, square root of 7. Square root of 4 is equal to 2, so it's the same thing as 2 root 7. Okay, so it's 8 plus or minus 2 root 7 over 2. Okay, then ask yourself, is there anything in common with all three pieces? And you should see that there is a 2 in common. So if I take 2, if I divide everything by 2, 8 becomes 4, plus or minus the square root of 7, and the 2's go away. Okay, so that's the simplified form. Uh, example 4, these are complex roots. They will always happen in conjugate pairs, okay? Which, again, we'll study a lot more in pre-calc. Um, why that happens. But anyway, on 4a, let's take a look at this one. We have, uh, I'm not going to identify the ABCs anymore, so hopefully you have practice with that. So here we go. We have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 4 all over 2 times 3. Okay, this is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, this is going to be 25. So notice, this is what happens when this number is bigger than this number, right? So uh, this is going to be 25 minus um, 4 times 3 times 4, which is 48. 25 minus 48 is negative uh, 23, all over 6. All right, so for this guy, I have to take an i out. So I'm going to take an i out of that thing, and I get negative 5 plus or minus i root 23 over 6. Okay. Uh, and then for 4b, kind of the same deal. I'm going to let you work that one, but you'll first go to this. x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0. And now you have your a, your b, your c, right? So uh, I'll just set it up, and then I'll let you finish it. So we have 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, uh, which is technically negative 4 squared, but that's okay. 
uh, I'll give you the same answer, minus 4 times 1 times 13 all over 2. Okay, so you can do that and see that that's going to also end up with an i, uh, and the solution to that should be 2 plus or minus 3i when you simplify it all the way down. Okay, the discriminant, I've been hinting at the discriminant. Um, so this is the what's inside of the square root sign, right? So it's the b squared minus 4ac. You can quickly check to see if something has two real rational roots, two real irrational roots, one real irrational root, or two complex roots. Okay, so um, how you do that is you test the discriminant. Okay, so if this number is positive, so if I get a positive number inside of the square root. All right. Um, and b squared minus 4ac is a nice, perfect square, which means I can actually take the square root of it. Right, so if like, for instance, if it was like 16, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 16, then I know that I'll have two real rational roots. Okay, so whatever comes out of this will be rational, it'll be a nice number, it won't be like a repeating decimal or anything like that. Uh, the same, so that's like an example of this. The same deal for uh, two real irrational roots, like this thing will have to be positive, but if this is not a perfect square, like 15 for instance, then you'll have two real irrational roots. So these will be like ugly decimals that you would leave in like radical form. Uh, if you, if it equals zero, so if I have the square root of zero, right? So if that thing is zero, then there'll be one real rational root, as you saw. And then if it's gonna be a negative number inside of there, then I know that I'm gonna be stuck with two complex roots. It's, the graph looks like this, doesn't cross the x-axis, but in another dimension it crosses uh, the, in the imaginary number system. Okay, so that's the discriminant. So here, it says find the value of the discriminant, then describe the number and types of roots. You're just gonna find b squared minus 4ac, and then use it, compare it with this chart, if you need to, if you need practice with that, uh, to tell me how many roots and what type of roots. So here, b is eight, so, right? So I have eight squared minus four times negative five times negative one. That's gonna be 64 uh, minus uh, this is going to be negative 20, positive 20, right? Uh, 4 times negative 5 times negative 1 gives me positive 20. So this thing comes out to 44. 44 is not a perfect square, okay? But it is positive. So since it's positive, I know that I'm going to, and it's not perfect, I know it's going to be two real uh, solutions since this is not a perfect square, it's going to be two real irrational roots when I solve that thing.